Hi, my name is Pam W. I'm a compulsive eater and I'm um, abstinent today, uh, which is three meals weight measured um, from the gray sheet food plan. I write them down and commit them to my, I call my food into my sponsor each morning before I eat, before I eat it. And uh, I don't eat between my meals, no matter what, except for approved beverages. And uh, I do this. Uh, with the you know with the help and support of this whole gray sheet community and a power greater than myself and um so i don't i was never uh normal around food my mother said the doctor put me on skim milk before i was a year old and i only my earliest memories are all of getting the foods we avoid very happily my mother was very nice she was not an overeater she died of alcoholism drank herself to death and so did my anyway it was in my family although two grandmothers were both obese and, and uh, but uh i'm the only person who was lucky enough to recover um so i like to tell this story because when uh, 50 years ago i got into al-anon because my mother was hospitalized with cirrhosis and somebody said oh that means she's a an alcoholic, you should go to al And I said, well, how could you tell? She said, well, you don't get cirrhosis if you're not an alcoholic. And what is al -Anon? al -Anon is for the families of alcoholics. So I thought, well, fine, that could help her. And I got into al -Anon And I guess it was, well, while I was in al -Anon, Overeaters Anonymous was quite young. And the only food plan they had was the gray sheet. That was all, if you went to an OM in New York, there were two meetings in New York only. A little bit later, they were like 35, 40. But right then, there were two meetings a week and the gray sheet food plan was it. And everybody was abstinent. Guess what? Surprise, surprise. Most of them were, most of them were AA members. There was a quietness and a seriousness. And I read that paragraph on the gray sheet that said, for carbohydrate sensitive people, man-made sugars and starches create a craving for more of the same. I said, that's me. Yeah, I knew it right away. And yet, of course, it took many years before I got abstinent because I have a disease that tells me I don't have a disease. This is the disease that tells me I don't have a disease. That's addiction. That's it. I have a wonderful article that I found on the Internet that uh, if you're interested, please contact me. It's, based, it's called How Addiction Hijacks the Brain. And it's a beautiful article. Really, it's from Harvard Medical School. It's a great article. It helps reinforce how this is why in the wiring. My brain is not my friend on this particular issue. I cannot listen to. I cannot listen to myself. I cannot define my own abstinence, and um, you know, I, I, I it, because my brain is going to lie to me. And a day at a time, I can protect myself against my lying brain by. You know, talking to you guys, listening to you guys, and not being and not being in, in not being my own sponsor around the food. <laughs> so, and you know what I heard when I got to Gracie, I heard this is AA for the food. This is not OA because by that time that I okay, so I got sober two years later. I stopped smoking three, four packs of cigarettes a day. You had to get up in the night to keep going to get that many done. And stopped drinking about 40 cups of coffee a day. And between those two things that had been a big control on my eating, I was overweight, but not much, not, not, not anything that made me scared about it. The way I started eating after I stopped smoking was terrifying. I blew up like a balloon and I, I tried and tried, even though I already knew that I was carbohydrate sensitive. When I went back to Overeaters Anonymous, there were nine additional food plans in addition to the there was as a friend in the gray sheet used to say there was the uh blue sheet then there was the orange there was a blue sheet the orange sheet and the bull sheet which was a shorthand for you know <laughs> the dignity of choice which was seven more food plans you know and guess what each one of them added you can't guess can you some form of carbohydrate of course so anyway um that were supposed to be healthy, right? There's no carbohydrate that's healthy for me unless it's on the gray sheet. 
So um, I I got it that, you know, this is AA for the food, and AA for the food. I've, you know, in AA, I found out I'm not a bad person getting good. I'm a sick person getting well. That's very helpful to me because I think compulsive overeaters like me are have a compulsion to be a good little girl. And that was not in my favor. <laughs> Didn't work in my favor uh, because the only way I could keep being good was to, you know, stuff whatever was not good in me or it didn't seem good to me. So, um, and I also, I also hear it in, in gray sheet, meetings, 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 don't eat no matter what, meetings, meetings, meetings. And I do this just for one day because the way I used to go on a diet was tomorrow, you know, so just for today, I would be eating. So that worked for if I wanted to keep eating. <laughs> the same thing works if I want to be absent. I'll do it just for today. I'll do it just for today. And tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll decide. But by the time I get there, of course, that would be today as well. So um, when, I, when I got absent in New York uh, in 19, whatever, I don't know, 80, nine so i'm coming up well it's i've got over 32 years now april 1st april april 1st was the first day i did it i went back to day one on april 12th for something quite innocent i didn't eat anything that wasn't on the plan but my sponsor didn't like that i had a little gap of 10 minutes between one part that i ate in a restaurant and the part that i ate on the bus going home so that was a day one but uh 32 years it's like astounding astounding Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, when I got about a year in, you know, abstinent, there was a, no, when I got 90 days, there was a step study starting an AWOL, a way of life uh, to, you know, 12 step step study. And I wanted to jump right in, but I was advised by the people whom I admired in my little group, who three of whom had started in Cambridge and come to New York. They were my favorites, the message that they carry. And they recommended strongly that I didn't do an AWOL until I had a year of back-to-back -back abstinence. And that, that was, I think that was brilliant because I did that. There was another AWOL starting just around the time I had a year, I got into an AWOL and it was wonderful. And I watched the people with less than a year pick up the food between step three and four. And nothing wrong with steps one, two, and three, the day you walk in, but it may not be a great idea for some of us to be focusing on, am I a good enough girl in step four when I just walked in? Uh, but anyway, um, I, I heard that it's not a diet, that we eat like queens. This is, you know, yummy. Um, uh, I think, I you know, they said we pick the biggest, the best, the gooeyest and the greasiest. So, you know, that all sounded good to me. And they, I, in the beginning, when I first walked in, I felt like these people were not spiritual enough for me, by the way. That was my conclusion, uh, because they're talking about finding a breakfast fruit as big as their head and, you know, all the, that, that loving your food to be good didn't feel spiritual to me. I'd been in a big book cult. I'd done the steps. I had done 293 amends, you know, like I was so spiritual. And, but after I said to myself when I got here, I didn't complain out loud, you know, I kept my mouth shut, but I thought to myself, I need something. I definitely need something. I'm going to stay here until I find something better, assuming I would, you know, find something better. But after about six months, when I thought about that, I thought, I love this. Book. This is phenomenal. I love it for many reasons. Um, I could talk about some more tools. I don't have a lot of time left. I think I will say what I love, though. Somebody, one of the people from Cambridge said at one point, putting my food in a cup, in a cup and on a scale three times a day is the most spiritual thing I do in a day. And that went right all through me like the truth. I said, wow, that's the truth. And uh, um, I learned not to explain gray sheet to people who are not on the gray sheet. I don't even can't even explain to people on the gray sheet. I remember I asked my first sponsor why something, why and she said, don't even try. She said, gray sheet's like a French verb. Don't even try to explain. It makes no sense at all. No, no offense to the French. I love French. <laughs> um, so uh, 
also um, uh, I can have a vigorous and positive, positive attitude toward reishi absence, and I don't have to have a positive attitude toward anything else in my life necessarily. Some of us need to uh, make a list of grievances and, and griefs, you know, in order to stay abstinent and have a, have a right to have those feelings. Um, they said, if all I do in a day is weigh and measure my three meals I, I, and pull the covers over my head, I'm a smashing success. And some new, young person said to me this recently, I'm a rock star. <laughs> I thought that was adorable. Um, my food, and I used to see, you know, in the meeting, people would say, put out their left hand and say, my food is on this hand and everything else in my life is on this hand and I don't clap. And I love that. I love that. Um, it's the last house on the block. It's a mansion. It's not a diet. I have freedom from obsession. Uh, I think I already said this. I choose the biggest, the best, the greasiest, and the greasiest. Um, we don't add food to what's on the original plan, the gray sheet plan, no matter what. The clarity about abstinence is so golden to me. I've spent decades, decades obsessing about what I should eat. Is it enough? Is it too much? Is it this? Is it? I mean, I don't have to obsess one bit. I measure my food exactly on the scale, 4.0, whatever it is, exactly. And if I have to change it for any reason at all, I call up my sponsor. If she's not there, I call somebody else with 90 days and I tell them what the problem is and they tell me what to do about it. I, I, uh, I, I dropped my lunch after I'd halfway eaten it early in my abs in the first six months sometime. I was like, oh my God. I called my sponsor. She said, put a towel over it. Don't worry. She said, wait, start from scratch. Wait and measure your whole food all over again and eat it. And then after that, you can clean up what you, know, you can clean up what you dropped. I thought, oh wow, these people are not into deprivation, and there's nothing punitive about this. This is this is this is the most astounding thing I've ever found That's in my two life. Minutes left. Two minutes, did you say? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Oh, I wish I could tell you about hospital experience. I got to tell you about one hospital experience. They told me I had to drink foods that are not absolute treat. They told me. I had to, or I could die. So I said to this adorable little nurse, so they're all fluttering around me. I'm going to die because I don't drink seven up, you know? So I said, fine, I'll die. <laughs> fine. And she said, hmm, maybe we could give you salt tablets. And I said, good, I'll take salt tablets. <laughs> so um, I guess uh, that's about it. Um, I'm, I'm, um, I think this gives people, I work with people, and this gives people more clarity than all my Gracie clients have a kind of clarity that rarely do I find anything close to it in a client who's not on the Gracie, even if they're not an addict. This, the food that I eat gives me clarity. I am so grateful. That's it, I think, my time. So um, thank you very much for listening. I look forward to hearing you guys. I don't eat no matter what.